Hey everybody, what's up? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. My name is Kelly, and I have a video for you today that I promise will be fairly short. Um, I published a video about a week ago about the new DJI Smart Controller, and it's done very well. It's one of the fastest growing videos I've ever put out, and there's been a lot of questions in the comment section, and so I thought I'd answer some of those questions here today. Uh, before we get started though, I got a couple of quick shout outs. This won't take long. First one is for a guy named Jim Crennan. Now, Jim is someone that uh, follows me on YouTube and also is a part of the Ready, Set, Drone flight crew. Uh, Jim was pointed out to me by a couple of guys uh, as having some challenges recently. He's got cancer and he's battling that and he recently lost his job. So Lloyd Mendenhall, the grumpy blogger set up a GoFundMe page for Jim. I've contributed to it. I know a lot of other folks in the drone community have. If you've got five, 10 bucks or more that you can spare, but even just five or 10 would really make a big difference, please go over there, check it out and see if you can help Jim out. He's a really positive guy. I've had a lot of interaction with him recently and I'm really hoping that we can help him out financially so that he can concentrate on fighting cancer and getting back to work. That said, I want to mention another Jim, that's Jim Wallace, uh, Mr. Graphic. Jim Wallace is the Ready, Set, Drone subscriber of the month, and I just want to give a shout out to him. I just watched a video on his channel with him flying over a beautiful frozen pond. Um, I live in Texas. It's pretty cold here today, but um, uh, frozen ponds kind of fascinate me because that never happens here. So if you want to go see what a frozen pond looks like from a drone's perspective, go check it out on uh, Jim Wallace, AKA Mr. Graphics channel. And finally, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Philip Ulrich, who has been helping me out with videos recently and put together a pretty amazing video. It's a demolition of a uh, parking garage here in Austin. And it's something that you don't see every day. He did it at 60 frames a second. And so you get a nice slow-mo shot of it. If you wanna go check that out, uh, I'll put it up top. And one thing that Jim, Jim, and Philip have in common is they're part of the Ready, Set, Drone flight crew. It's a group that supports this channel. If you wanna join, there's a button down below. Click it and you can learn more. All right, so I took these questions straight out of the comments section on the bottom of the video. Uh, there have been a lot of great comments. There's also a lot of people who uh, feel like this thing might be too expensive. And, you know, I can't really argue about that. It's not something you need. It might be something you want. It's kind of like an extra slice of pie or a turbocharger on your car's engine. You know, it's not essential, but it certainly is cool. That said, though, let me answer the questions that were down below. One of the questions that came up was, are the sticks that you use on the new smart controller compatible with the sticks that you used on the original controller? So as you can see here, the one on the right is the old controller. It's got kind of a hole in the middle of it um, that screws into the controller. And the one on the left is more of a traditional kind of threaded screw thing. So they aren't compatible. So if you happen to lose um, one of these sticks, you can't cross compat with them. But the good thing is the controller does come with four of them, so you're not gonna be stuck if you lose one or two, and I suppose you could always order more. The next question that seems to come up a lot is what drones is the new controller compatible with? This new controller works with OcuSync 2. OcuSync 2 is currently available in the entire Mavic 2 series that includes the Mavic 2 Zoom, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 2 Enterprise, and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, which has the camera and the FLIR camera on it. So if it uses OcuSync 2, it can work with this. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Unfortunately, the Phantom 4 version 2 does not have uh, OcuSync 2. It uses the original OcuSync, as does the original Mavic Pro. So you can't use this thing with the original Mavic Pro or the Phantom 4 version 2. All these numbers get a little confusing. So that's it. It doesn't work with the Mavic Air. It doesn't work with any of the other Phantoms, uh, only the Mavic 2 series. If you see these antennas, they pop out, they actually fold down like that so that you can store this thing, you know, and take the sticks out and put it in your backpack or whatever, and they go up like this. Now, um, what is the best position for these antennas? And this has been a discussion with uh, the original controller and back to other controllers, including the Mavic Pro. These antennas actually transmit from the surface here on the top. So that's where the signal is going out. So if you're flying the drone and it's up there, then you're gonna to wanna to have them down like this because it's gonna be transmitting towards it. If you're flying the drone and it's up there and you hold it flat, then you're gonna to wanna to hold it like this because then it's going up like that. So basically you just wanna kinda of keep it angled. You can put them kinda, of, they kinda of will go in the middle and stay. They'll go down a little like this and stay 
course it'll go like this, but that doesn't do you much good unless it's below you. But I'm thinking most of the time you're probably gonna have them uh, like that if the drone is out in front of you and you're keeping an eye on it. Again, if it's right above you, you could put it like this. So that's the best position for the antennas. All right, so the next question is the first one that requires me to actually turn this thing on, which I'll go ahead and do. Um, I do wanna note that I've got the battery at 100%, and you'll see it here in a second. Um, I just charged it, and so I'm also gonna do a battery test with it. So just noting that I'm turning it on, and the time is 10 minutes after 5 p.m., and I'm gonna basically run this, uh, run this battery out and uh, see um, how long it will go for. At uh, I'm gonna switch it up to 60% brightness, because that's the, that's the default, it's what it's standard at, and that's what I had it at before. I've got the Wi-Fi on, and I'm gonna go ahead and record the screen. The way you would install an app is you would go to the apps here. You would go to the Lightning Browser, and you would actually in download the apps. Now, this website right here uh, is Amazon.com, and it's Amazon.com for um, Android. And it allows you to actually download the Amazon uh, App Store app, which is the one that allows you to download Android apps from the Amazon App Store. It's a little confusing. So these are the two apps that I've downloaded. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Amazon app, and I'm gonna say install, and install it right now. It's installed, so I'll go ahead and hit done. Okay, and now you can see Amazon App Store is here on my applications page, on the apps page. So I could hit it, and then of course I'd need to log into my Amazon account, but you can download Android apps from the Amazon App Store. And so that's how you go about doing it. So the next question came from Mel at 400 AGL. And the question was, can you use the controller in the different ways to tilt the gimbal besides just using the wheel? Okay, so after a little bit of poking around, I did figure out that you can actually control the gimbal with your finger. I didn't actually know you could do this. And then you go like this, or you go like this, and you see the gimbal tilting down. You see the gimbal tilting up. Not sure if you could see that very clearly, but it basically creates a little spot on the screen and allows you to, oh, actually <laughs> tilt, turn the gimbal side to side too. I had no idea you could do that. That is so cool. That is so cool. I wonder if you double tap if it recenters. I'll bet you can control one of the uh, program one of the buttons to recenter the gimbal. But anyway, yes, you can. Mel, great question. You can uh, control the gimbal with your finger on this screen. It takes a little getting used to. But once you get used to it, that's actually really cool. Okay, the next question uh, about the DJI Smart Controller: Can it be used as a trainer? And I think what they're talking about in this is connecting two uh, controllers, maybe this one and the original one, to the uh, same drone and then being able to take over if you're teaching somebody how to fly? I believe the answer is no. I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Uh, you can do that with some RC airplanes. They're called buddy boxes and you do it via a cable and you connect the two of them. I'm sure it can be done electronically now when I did it. Many years ago, it was via a cable. I don't think you can do that. So that's the answer, no. So the next question I've been asked and I probably need to figure out myself is what is the best uh, SD card for it? The SD card I've got in it right now is a regular SanDisk, and I'm getting a little message on the screen that says slow SD card. So that's obviously not a good one. So what I'm gonna do is when I'm editing this video, I'm gonna figure out which one is the best. I believe it's probably one of the SanDisk Ultra um, cards. Test it and make sure it doesn't say slow SD card, and then I'll put the answer right here on the screen. So this is the best SD card for it, and I will uh, put a link in the description if you want to buy said SD card from Amazon. Okay, next question. Does it support quick charging? The answer is absolutely yes. It comes with this right here, this charger, which just looks like a normal uh, wall, at least US wall brick USB-A charger. However, this is a quick charger that ch quick charges via USB-C. I tried charging it with another charger that I have, and I also tried charging it with a wall plug USB that I have. Both of those charged uh, much more slowly, about half the rate. When I plugged this in, it went really fast, and it takes it about two hours, 
little more to fully charge from a depleted battery down to 20% or so. So the next question, what is the battery life on this thing? Uh, well, DJI has their claims. I think they say it's two and a half hours of battery life. Um, and I am actually going to test it. Now, when we started this review, it was at 100% because I had charged it uh, before we came out here, turned it on for the first time uh, in a while since it had been charged. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna fly a drone for a little while, and I'm just going to uh, see how long it takes to get it down to 10% battery. At 10%, I'm gonna stop. We actually started this at 510. It's been uh, almost 30 minutes, uh, about, actually about 25 minutes. So let me take the drone up, fly it around a little bit, um, mess with some of the controls, kind of just play with the app a bit and, and put it through its paces. By the way, the screen is at 60%, which is the default setting. All right, well, rather than make you sit here with me, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and just fly it down to 10%, see how long that takes, uh, and I will start at the time that I turned it on at 510, and I won't turn it off at all, and just see how long it takes for it to run down to 10% uh, after it's been uh, flown and on for a while. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll be right back. There's the drone out there in the yard. I'm um, just hovering over my patio with the light because it's a Mavic 2 zoom and it has LED on the bottom. And you can see the 17%, no, uh, yeah, 17% right there. I'm going to run it down to 10%. And the time is actually 8.43. Okay, so here we are. Oh. We are just getting the low battery warning at 10%. I don't know if you can see it up there in the upper right corner. All right, so it's the next day, and this thing finally died last night at 8.50 something p.m. I turned it on to start filming the video at 5.10 p.m., and it went until 8.50 something p.m., so that's about three hours and 40 minutes that it actually stayed on uh, being used. So I used it to fly through several batteries. I also did some browsing on it through the, um, through the browser, uh, some web browsing. I played with some apps. I kind of explored some other things. And while I was eating dinner, I just kept poking buttons to keep the screen from going into its power saving mode. It does have a power saving mode. So if you don't touch it for a couple of minutes, it goes dark and I assume that saves the power. That was all at 60% brightness. So I imagine if you took it down to 25% brightness, which is still plenty bright if you're in the shade or if it's nighttime, uh, it would go a lot longer. So I was pretty impressed. Uh, three hours and 40 something minutes after 100% um, to 10% battery. So there's the results of that. So question number 10, the last question is, uh, why isn't it available and when will it be available in the US? And I don't actually know the answer to that. If someone in the comments knows, I'm hoping that we can uh, get an answer from either DJI or some other person who might be in the know. But I did hear a rumor that it had something to do with the government shutdown that the FCC, which would regulate you know, radio transmissions and such, uh, had not been able to finalize the paperwork on this so that it could be sold in the US and approve it. And since the government was shut down, the FCC was not working, the US FCC, Federal Communications Commission, uh, that basically means that it couldn't be approved for sale. That's a rumor I heard. Don't know if it's true or not. If you guys have comments about it, I'd love to hear what they are, if you have other insight or thoughts. Um, but I hope it's for sale soon. Definitely worth checking out. Do you need it? No. Is it cool to have? Yes. Short answer. Uh, all of that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about drones, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.